What's up everyone, Ben from Living Survival and today we're going to take a look at a highly requested video. We're going to look at a bunch of apps that you can get on your cell phone to turn it into a survival resource. Now most of us these days have a smartphone and whether you use it for calling or not, it can be a very valuable survival resource. We're going to take a look at the iPhone and apps from the iPhone marketplace, but if you have an Android device, most of these apps do or are available on your marketplace as well. We got the iPhone hooked up and we're going to do some screen sharing today and take a closer look at some of the apps that I've downloaded and that I use. Now keep in mind, phones have several different radios built into them, whether they're the cellular radio, the Wi-Fi radio, the Bluetooth radio, and the GPS radio, and all of those can work without a data connection. So for example, you can Bluetooth to a watch, for example, and you can collect data for that on a hike or you can map a location. If you have a particular style of smartwatch, you can use the Wi-Fi, obviously, you can turn that on or off to get data when you're at a hotspot, for example, a coffee shop, even if you don't subscribe to it at home, you could use those apps at a hotel, something like that when you're on the road. Cellular, obviously, you can use that to make calls and, and, with, and download uh, high-speed data over the cellular networks as well. And then you have your GPS, and your GPS is generally going to work without any of those other connections. So things like mapping, as long as you've downloaded the maps, things like uh, maps and navigation and things like that are going to work regardless of if you have cell signal or not. Now right off the bat, when you get your phone, there are several apps that are very handy built right into the phone. One being the camera, for example. I often will take pictures of camping spots that I've found, wild edibles, hunting locations and things like that and you're going to see in a moment some of those apps will actually coordinate your photos with GPS and allow you to go back to those spots. So having your camera on your phone is a very valuable uh, resource. Let's say you witness a crime or something like that. You can use the camera to take a still photo or a video. That stuff can be very helpful indeed. Other things that are built into your phone are obviously the clock which you can have a timer, which I often use, stopwatch, and of course, alarms. So those become very handy. Calendar is very happy, uh, very handy. But let's dig into some of the apps that are specifically related to survival or the outdoors and apps that I use. Now what you can do on the iPhone and you can also do on some Android devices is you can group your apps together into categories. Generally, you can make a folder similar to what I'm showing here. I have several different categories set up for the different apps that I use. So I have weather, navigation, hiking, medical, reference, communication, signaling, my in case of emergency app, books, games, and news. So all those categories for me pertain to survival and you could use them in the event of an emergency. So if we go right across the top here, let's start with weather. Now weather is a very important tool for me. I'm out and about usually and I like to check the weather not only for temperature but for storms and things like that. So several of the weather apps that I use are Weatherbug. Weatherbug is uh, very uh, accurate, I find. It, it will also let you obviously store different locations. You can pull up your map of your area and see if there's any weather systems or anything like that. You can zoom out. You can see down uh, just above Florida there. They are having some, uh, some rainy weather, it looks like. But that works really well for me to be able to keep track of the weather. Another app that I use is the Storm app. That is provided by Weather Underground. It's basically just a more sophisticated radar. You can see that this one's showing a little bit of snow moving in, lake effect snow over Lake Michigan. Uh, it generally will show a little bit more than some of the other standard weather apps will. And then My Radar is just another app that works pretty well that you can use to collect uh, radar data. You can see that this one is showing that storm system as well. Uh, moving over the uh, the Great Lakes there. So a couple little uh, apps that I use for weather and that is very handy if I'm going to be going out and about. Let's move over to navigation. Now built into my phone and probably most Android devices are a Maps. Let's say Google, Google Maps and also a Compass app. Now you can download uh, more accurate compasses or you can download better, uh, you know, better looking compasses that have more features to them like uh, the ability to add waypoints and the ability to track speed and elevation as you can see this one uh, will do here. Another one uh, that I downloaded was this GPS compass. Again, it shows your altitude, your speed and has, you know, a little bit more than your traditional compass app that comes 
on your phone. Google Maps is obviously very handy for finding locations. It's built right into their Google search, so if you have access to the internet or your cellular data, you can find locations very, very quickly and drive right to them. You can calculate distances. Another app that I use all the time is the Waze app. This app is crowdsourced, so what you can do on this app is if you see something while you're traveling down the road, you can report it, such as an accident or a police car or something like that. So you get those type of alerts when you're driving down the road. It's a very, very handy app and it has become my number one GPS app. So you definitely should check out Waze. That is an awesome app. Then there's also other mapping uh, apps that I use when I'm hiking, for example. You can get topography maps, which are very handy. And a lot of these you can download offline so that they'll work without, your, without any connection to internet. You can also, on these apps, as I said earlier, generally store a photo or something like that. Maybe I find a stand of berries or something like that. I can mark that location so I know where those wild edibles are. I can check them year to year, different trees that I find, different camping locations and things like that. You can mark those locations. You can also record tracks. You can do all sorts of stuff with some of the GPS apps that are out there and you can get some really good topography maps as well. In Michigan, we don't have much topography. I don't, we don't have very uh, drastic changes in elevation or anything like that. So for me, it's not that big a deal to know my elevations. Now, another app in navigation would be Uber. You never know when you might need a ride. Maybe your car breaks down or something like that. Maybe you get lost. You can call an Uber and they can come right to you. So Uber, I do list as a sort of semi-survival app. Definitely helpful if you need a ride. Move on over to the hiking app. Again, these are just apps that will show you different trails and things like that. Uh, depending on your location, they'll let you uh, start a track so you can track and save those tracks for later. Go back and you know beat your time or something like that. All Trails is a really good app. It shows you a lot of different trails and campsites and a, and a lot of uh, detailed information about the trails around you. So I've used that app quite a bit. Karen, I haven't used this app very much, but I know it is fairly popular. Again, with most of these apps, you can track your uh, your waypoints and everything like that. And again, a lot of them will connect to the watch, as does my Garmin Connect app. Very handy for saving tracks and saving locations that I've been that I record on my watch and then later sync up to my phone. Medical, there's a ton of medical apps on there. Basically, what you would want a medical app for is to be able to look up different uh, remedies and things like that for certain things that might happen. This first aid app uh, is, I believe it's uh, from the Red Cross. It's very helpful. You can look up basically different symptoms and things like that uh, and what to do about it. So let's say someone starts having a seizure, for example, it's going to tell you exactly what to do. Don't restrain them, put a blanket over them. And it's got a lot of different informa information about that. Poisoning would be another you know, big one or something like that. So this app is very handy as a reference and I found that it's laid out very easily. So if you were injured or someone else was injured, you could quickly look up and uh, you know, find something that you could do to at least relieve some pain until help arrives. Another app that I found pretty handy is iTriage. Again, it's laid out pretty similar. You can put in medications and things like that, conditions. You can also click on symptoms. This one's kind of cool because it lays it out uh, you know, for as a body. So you could click on, you know, the chest and things like that. And it's going to give you different things like chest pain. And again, it's going to tell you, uh, you know, what that could possibly be and what you can do about it. You can put in your age and things like that. So pretty cool little symptom checker uh, and first aid uh, apps that you can get on your phone for medical Another category I have is called reference. This would be where I put in different little survival books and things like that, like the little SAS survival guide. It's got you know handy little things for building shelters and fires. There's a tree identification app, which is pretty handy. Again, you can download these trees to uh, or the information on the trees to your phone, which is very handy. Then you can use it out and about. A couple different wild edibles and wild berries. I haven't found uh, one particular book on berries or trees or anything like that that beat having a good book. So for these, you definitely you know, want to look into some good books, and I might do another video on the books that I have, but there are apps available that can help you out a little bit with that. Another one that I like is fishing spots. If I'm in a new area, this one will tell you all different fishing spots and what people have caught there and things like that. 
So I find that's pretty cool. You can mark the locations as well. Another cool app is this OnX hunting app, which is what is cool about this is that you can click on different plots of land and it's gonna load up and tell you the owner and things like that, tell you different things about the land. So that's pretty cool. I believe you can also uh, save in tracks and things like that. And you can also subscribe and pay, uh, pay for this app and get other unlocked features. I believe I just have a trial of it but it definitely looks pretty cool and I'll probably try it out next hunting season. Finally, I have a good knot app. Now this one is called Grog Knots and I believe you do have to pay for this one, but what I like about it is it has all different types of uh, knots and they're very easy to follow. So for example, if we wanted like a, uh, you know, a trucker's hitch, for example, you can click on it and it's gonna tell you the different, uh, you know, how to do that knot very slowly you can pause it rewind it and things like that i find this is very handy because i can't remember all the knots that i want to use i do have about four or five knots that i most commonly use and then beyond that if i want to know a different type of knot you can quickly look it up in here which i find is very very cool next up we have communication apps i've put several different apps in there one is this scanner i use this scanner all the time now you do have to have an internet connection for this but it works really really well for the places that they don't encrypt their scanners you can listen to them you can listen to what's going on i generally will listen to my hometown for example and it's something that can give you a lot of information in the event of an emergency or something like that you can get all different uh you know types of sources you can get all different types of areas uh, whether it be police fire ems it even works for different countries and things like that so this is one of the best apps that I use all the time, and that is Scanner Radio. Now, if you have your ham radio license, this repeater book app is really helpful. It allows you to look up different repeaters, and you could program those into your radio. So pretty straightforward. You simply just find one. It gives you the receive, the transmit, the offset. It gives you all the information you would need to know to program that into your ham radio. And again, that app is called Repeater Book. There's apps like this Zello app that allow you to turn your phone into a two-way radio so you can use it to sort of like the old Nextel phones you can use it to just uh, chirp back and forth between the two phones you do have to have a data connection for that but what's nice is you can have groups so you can add people into groups let's say you're all camping for example and you're going to go all go out on a scout you can turn your phones into walkie talkies and it works better than having to call or text so that's a pretty cool app when you're in a group setting a radio app is a good thing to have now most radio apps uh, only work with a data connection, but if you have a FM uh, receiver in your phone, and some Android devices do, you can actually pick up FM radio. You usually plug in your headphones as the antenna, and you can pick up AM and FM radio, weather radio, and things like that, which are pretty cool. The iPhone doesn't have that capability. They don't unlock the FM in the phone, but you can get a internet-related radio, and that would allow you to tap into local radio for emergencies and things like that. But keep in mind, in the event of a natural disaster or something like that, chances are cell towers are going to be knocked out with people overloading them or simply infrastructure failures. So something like that may or may not work. And finally, in communication, GeoZilla, which is a nice app. It allows you to track different people in your family. So as long as they have the app, it's running in the background. Kids, for example, you can track their whereabouts. It tells you if they move and if, they, uh, you know, if they're traveling to a different area, for example. So maybe one of the members in your family is going on a trip or maybe you're carpooling or something like that. This app tracks them and it allows you to uh, see where they're going and when they make movements. So pretty cool app for keeping track of people that you want to keep track of. Next, I have a signaling app. Now, generally, you can use the light in the uh, phones as a flashlight. For example, with this app, there's different things you can do. You can use it just as a standard flashlight, and that'll allow you to turn the, uh, the light on and off on your camera. This one also has different things like SOS and emergency and things like that, which is pretty pretty cool as well so a flashlight app can be pretty handy i got this whistle app it basically is just that a whistle I'm not sure it's going to allow me to do the audio while i'm connected in here but it is fairly loud if you turn it up i you know i guess if you broke an arm or something like that you could certainly use that as a signaling device to try and get rescued Books are obviously very, very handy. You can download a lot of books. I know a lot of people carry a Bible, for example. You can get the whole Bible on your phone. 
Kindle, Nook, Google Play, iPhone, Audible, all those services allow you to download books onto your phone so you could download some of the uh, paperback or hardcover books that you have and have that reference material available with you even without a cell uh, or Wi-Fi connection. So that is pretty cool indeed as well. Games, games would be handy if you have kids or something like that or even you know myself if I need to pass the time, I'm sitting somewhere, I'm bored, you know you can pass the time with games. Stuff like that comes in very handy in a survival situation. It comes in very handy, let's say, if you're at an airport and you get stuck there for a day or two, especially if you're flying into an area like Colorado where, you know, different uh, airports and things can get snowed out. You know, having something to do on your phone definitely plays a big part in keeping your sanity and keeping calm and things that you need to do in that type of situation. And finally, the last category that I have is news. I have some different news services here. These are nice. You can set them to alert you with breaking news. You can set them for local news, so that's nice. If there's an event going on in your area, you can generally find out about it. One more app that I have on my phone and I don't have it in a folder, and generally I have it on the main page so that medical or something like that could find it, is your ICE app. And, and that stands for In Case of an Emergency. What you can do with this app is you can put in your different allergies, you can put in your different medications, you can put in a photo of yourself, your birth date, and things like that. You can select contacts. For example, I have my mom set up as a contact, and you can actually make a wallpaper for that, which is pretty cool, and that wallpaper will actually put it on the home screen. So what's nice about that is even if medical can't get into your device, they can't unlock your device, they can see your medical information listed right on the screen just by turning the phone on. They will be able to see your uh, contact information, your emergency contact information. So I find that very helpful and I do keep that app on my phone. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and give it a big thumbs up. Again, leave me a comment below on what you guys think and any apps that I may have missed. If you wanna know the detailed name of any of these apps, please leave me a comment below and I'll do my best to respond. I hope you guys share this video to your friends and family who might be interested in installing some of those, these apps on their phones to your social media. And as always, if you haven't done so already, please click that red subscribe button. Subscribe to my channel for more videos.